Aloha from the main island of Hawaii. We are in the uh, Volcano House campground where there's a little cat over there hunting birds. But there's these seven cabins available for, available for rent. Uh, they come with their own little things. Check it out. Each cabin comes with a fire pit, a grill, a little canopy or front porch thing with a bench. And they're sufficiently spaced out so that you kind of have privacy. There is a men's and women's bathroom and shower there. And we just stayed our first night here last night. We arrived from Maui. We drove two hours around the island to get to Volcano, uh, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, about five minutes away from the visitor center, one of the visitor centers, is this campground. And I'm just gonna look for my key here. It's uh, their electronic locks. And check it out. Each cabin fits four people and a woman with a banana. Yeah, it has its own little outlets and lights. You get natural light from the outside. You have a bunk bed with a window and a, I want to say a full, a full bed, a queen bed. Uh, yeah, it's actually very comfortable, very fluffy. You get room service every day with clean sheets and stuff. <laughs> and towels. And towels. Mm -hmm. And then you have, um, they come to get the recycling and trash here. Yeah. And you have a lot of room for all of your items on this side, on that side. Like yeah, the, some you know, shelves. Like a nightstand type of thing. Yeah. And some shelves and racks for your yeah. towels. Very comfortable. I mean, it's October, so last night with the window open, it was mm -hmm. nice and nice and chilly here. Yeah. Uh, it fits four, so two one, and one one, but you can also, you have enough space to fill in like an inflatable bed or something. So you have like a one more person, you can, re you, um, yeah. you can fit them in here. Yeah. So overall, good value. I think it was, this place definitely more, more affordable than staying at one of the luxury lodges or hotels nearby. And you get to be out in nature. So cool. So now we're gonna go uh, check out some volcanoes. See you later. This is the volcano house where you can actually dine, have some lunch in front of Hawaii's and the world's biggest and most active volcano, just down there. You can see the smoke coming out of it right now. Uh, this park is ideal for the nighttime as you can see the the lava flowing more easily at night with the with the lights uh off <laughs> so hopefully at nighttime we're, we'll try to get some good footage of the lava flows from the crater over there uh, later today but magnificent view of this vast um caldera which has over time collapsed in kind of increments like a chunk collapse over here and down there as well almost stepwise over time since the 1400s it's been expanding uh ever ever more the land has been sort of dropping down yeah so for context like this is all we're on the volcano right now and that's the caldera and we're about 4,000 feet elevated from like sea level and so um, it's really high up here so you have to make sure like your breathing and everything is good um, especially on days like today where it's super smoky um, like the air conditions right now are actually not the best like we've, we've been told by park rangers um, to just be mindful and drink lots of water but yeah we're really high up like the drive here was really epic yeah um, yeah yeah elevation is is very high so and 
if that th th doesn't make it hard enough to breathe there's also the the gases from the volcano itself and the smog mm -hmm. which uh, affects breathing so take it easy if you do come up here it's October right now and it's uh, still pretty difficult I guess heat wise and also uh, air quality wise but it's very beautiful nonetheless you can see the trees in an ever lasting battle with mother nature over there to expand into the fiery depths and the fire keeping it at bay very dramatic and it smells really smoky like you, you get whiffs of it um, depending on where you're standing um, and then sometimes it's hot sometimes it's cold like and you're su it's um, suggested for you to take a rain jacket like we have our rain jackets on us because you just never know when it's going to start raining and storming up here it's really unpredictable um, the way the weather is here yeah yeah so bring a rain jacket and definitely check out the food spot right behind us as well. It's pretty good. We had some fish and chips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. You got, you got the view of the crater and a nice fireplace inside as well. And a gift shop. It's really nice. Really yeah. nice. Hey guys. So you can see behind me. These are some of the volcano house like um, rooms or suites. Um, so here, when, if you stay here, this is not where we're staying. We're staying at the cabins, which is further like inland. But this is right on the rim of right here. You can see where the crater is behind me. So if you stay in these rooms, you can see, you can look into the crater overnight. And supposedly, because at night you can see the lava. So from the rooms, you can see um, the red, the, the light, and the vibrancy of the caldera. Um, if you stay here, right here. And then the, the restaurant and the gift shops are right down the road up, up there. So you have a nice view and a really beautiful, just like outdoor environment <laughs> that you can enjoy while you're here. Yeah, check it out. The rooms, you have a nice bed and little seating area outside. And then right across is Mount Doom. <laughs> <laughs> or the lava pits. Hey. So we're on this trail and we notice a lot of the, a lot of fern here. And if you see here, a lot of the fern on the bottom is actually dead because um, they basically become like the soil for the young fern that you see growing on the top. So if you notice here it's green. And then here it's grayed out because it's it's already dead. Yeah, um, and they're doing this willingly. Like the, these ferns are are will, willingly dying to produce uh, excess soil to keep the plant overall alive because of the soil availability here near the volcano is rare, right? Yeah, and so like when new ones start to grow on top, these ones then like start to give way to the the young ones on on the top so that they can have nourishment to grow and then further further spread yeah. like and, and, and here's here. pretty dramatic look at this one this one is like this whole row here is grayed out yeah see? the plants are sort of uh, sacrificing themselves in order to turn into mulch and dirt so that the future generations of plants could live on mm -hmm. on, on the on the top of layer yeah. here and that's so cool it's like symbolic like once you know your time has come you've matured and you know it's time to give way to the new generation you then become the nourishment and the foundation for the new generation to grow like on top and continue to to evolve and spread so that's like so cool yeah it is yeah a lot of these plants here have their story like this tree here with the red flower also has a very interesting story as well hopefully you can see that uh, essentially and I really recommend looking into Hawaiian myths and legends and folklore but the volcano goddess Pele uh, was a very jealous woman and uh, a uh, a man she was courting kept projecting her advances so he she turned him into this tree and then the the girl he, he was seeing instead of her uh, turned her spirit animal which was a blue bird into this red plant that you see on the tree to kind of uh, keep them together always yeah. in a way in a fit of rage mm -hmm. <laughs> in a fit of jealous rage yeah. 
So a lot of these plants and flowers and things, the, the native Hawaiians had a myth or a legend mm -hmm. explaining why, for example, we have these very bright red uh, features in some of the plants and wildlife out here. Yeah. yeah, so supposedly Hera was coming after the like, quote-unquote girlfriend of the guy, but the, her, her guardian spirits turned her into that in like a flower yeah and so now the tree which is the guy and the flower are always together so pele couldn't actually come after them right exactly in the end in the end yeah in the end pele was uh unable to separate the two lovers and yeah. now you have this beautiful tree with these uh bright red flowers on top yeah that's like the gist of it. That's not, that's, you know, there's the more details and nuances to the tale. Um, yeah, but like, that's what we learned. Yeah, it's a faulty Westerner's view of the legend, but very interesting. I uh, highly recommend. I'll, I'll link a, a book I'm reading right now about Pele and other Hawaiian myths in the description so you guys could read and check it out. So just up here are these sulfur steam vents I'm not sure if you can see it on camera but right amongst this green vegetation are these hot volcanic gases coming out of the ground it smells like rotten eggs sulfur we're getting close to some major steam vent uh, holes, I guess you can say. This is very reminiscent of Yellowstone, yeah. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, yes, yes. In a way. And you can see all along like um, puffs of the smoke coming out. Yeah. Not as dramatic as the Yellowstone, but very beautiful nonetheless. You have here these fields right alongside these uh, steam vents. The fact that these plants could survive with these hot gases blowing on them all day is pretty incredible. Because you definitely feel warmth coming from this, these gases. And off on the distance up there you see a lot more too. Here we have some very cool colored rocks, some green, red colored rocks. Um, the chemicals and the gases uh, ch cause some chemical uh, changes in the composition of the rocks, giving them these uh, this color. That over there looks like radioactive yellow. Looks very cool. Yeah. So the the red, the reddish brownish, you see, is hematite. And then the greenish, whitish is like sulfur and then gypsum. Yeah, the white is yeah. gypsum, the yellowish, sulfur. It's right here. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. 